and it's a huge landscape. It was that connects the, the Central Calari Game Reserve and the Calari Trans Frontier Park. If you're talking about genetic connectivity, we are talking about wildlife movement in Bidus, that's why this is so important. The, the focal area, which is KD1, KD2, that's where we have the largest population of, of herbivores. All that. So it's important. But in this environment, the communities all live next to the wildlife. They live in the wildlife. The wildlife is around them. So certainly the empowerment of communities here has been a big focus for it. Looking at the, lo the women that we deal with in KD1 and KD2, giving them a chance would be awesome, would be great, because a lot of them need it. A lot of them need an escape plan from their everyday life. I know that it will do a greater good for a lot of women in the local communities. They need it. We would love more support from other organizations who can come on board and help us to encourage and empower and inspire local women. But the, the sheer vastness of this landscape, I mean it's huge. The project site is um, about 4% of the, the whole country. Kudu, Daika, Steenbuck. Um, in terms of the carnivores, we get all the, all, the, all the cats. So cheetah, lion, leopard, caracal, black-footed cats, genets, spotted hyenas and brown hyenas here together. It's a very significant population of, of lions. So in the KTP itself, we estimate there's about 375, which is very substantial. Ooh, what do we see? Shumba. Shumba. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's some lions under this tree, oddly enough. So livestock numbers are increasing and a slow movement of high numbers of cattle and goats and sheep and donkeys and horses moving closer to lion populations if you like. And unfortunately where there's farming often you get people who will hunt for food illegally so it's poaching and then in turn actually hunt for food to sell which is bushmeat. So the two kind of come hand in hand. We're a very small NGO, uh, full time we employ eight people and I'm including that eight. However, we do work with four communities in KD1, KD2. These are vast wilderness wildlife management areas on the edge of the Kalari Trans Frontier Park, which is a protected area. The partnership with Akashinga, I think, is critical because we're a very small NGO. And to preserve these landscapes, you've got to have a landscape approach. So working with KRC uh, in helping to build out the systems of Akashinga uh, that we've established in Zimbabwe. Uh, an additional 80 uh, jobs have already been created um, in those communities. To be able to build those systems out behind the long-term relationships and presence that they have in the country uh, is, is a long-term um, aspiration of ours as, a, as an organisation. They need the programme to know that um, they do not have to stay in abusive relationships. They do not have to give themselves away to men to just uh, and, and live, to have a living, to live I mean, they can do it themselves and they're very much capable of uh, leading their own lives. So meeting with the local communities in and around KD1 and KD2, it's been a, a very humbling experience just to be able to get their, their feedback um, on the project to date and the partnership to date. I think women have demonstrated in many ways that they are able, they are capable, they can take some of the roles that uh, men have been taking before. So my, my vision is to have communities actively playing a role in the conservation of wildlife.